At first glance, these clapboard buildings in Maine and the land around them look like a typical New England farming community. In fact, though, it's not typical or ordinary at all. Named after Sabbath Day Lake on its 700-odd hectare property, this is the last bastion of a unique religious movement in the United States, the Shakers, or United Society of Believers in Christ's first and second appearing. Holy Father, help me, I pray, to order In their heyday in the 1840s, there were about 20 communities across the country with 6,000 members. Today, there are only 10 Shakers left. Nine live here at Sabbath Day Lake, the other one in New Hampshire. Devout Protestant Christians, Shakers live monastically, trying to create a heaven on earth through their hard work and self-denial. Although they live communally, in emulation of Christ, they practice celibacy and call each other brother and sister. Persecuted in England, the first Shakers fled to America in 1774. Their settlement in Waterfleet, New York, in our museum, is the resting place of their leader, Mother Anne Lee. She had a vision that people needn't wait for Christ's second coming to find salvation. When she died, she left a thousand converts. 440 of them now lie alongside her, after dedicating their lifetimes to her strict guidelines. From the beginning, inspired leadership saw the movement grow and new communities established, all organized according to the Shaker's fundamental beliefs, separation from the world, common property, confession of sin, and self-denial. The sexes were equal in all things, both holding positions of leadership, but they lived apart, initially even using different doorways and internal stairways to their quarters. Throughout their history, the devotees supported themselves by farming and manufacturing, their work and principles attracting whole families. But although they also adopted many unwanted orphans, few of those stayed on into adulthood, and by the 20th century, most of the communities had disintegrated. Only at Sabbath Day Lake has there been some continued renewal over the past 200 years, and the traditional Shaker life endures. Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. Whilst part of the complex is a museum open to tourists, life here is one of devotion. Outside of prayer, the brothers and sisters are always busy, supporting themselves by working on the land or at their handicrafts, and they're dedicated to perfection in all they do. Their driving principle, handed down over the years, is to create heaven here on earth. Their motto, hands to work and hearts to God. There's work and worship, there's worship and work, and the two for a shaker become as one. No matter what job we're called to do during the daily round, no matter how lowly or how highly uh, evolved it may be, we're called to give the best that we have and to always be a cheerful and generous giver. In the care of Brother Wayne of the farm 65 sheep, each of whom he knows by name. Some titles personify their characters, but even Evil Marie and Fang supply some of the best wool that's hand spun and dyed on the premises and sold in their store. Under the supervision of Sister Meg, another traditional activity is the production of herbs. In fact, they've been grown, dried, and packaged at Sabbath Day Lake since 1799, and sold locally outside the community. Today, it's still their biggest industry, but now their reputation is such that they have buyers, mostly by mail order, from all around the world. Eldress of the group, Sister Frances, is responsible for everyone's well-being. In earlier times, that would have included the girls' education. Now she's head cook, and ten minutes before each meal, she signals the brothers and sisters to come in from the fields and the workshops. The only time the men and women come together during the day is at meal times and for prayer meetings, still observing strict segregation, of course, with Dimitri the dog lying sentinel. Hey. <laughs> Do you want some bread? The brick dwelling house where most of the Shakers live is the hub of community life. It emanates a sense of history everywhere. Past Shaker leaders keep a benign eye on proceedings. And the original little chalkboard still gives the readings and songs for the Sabbath worship service. The services take place in the oldest building in the village. And now they're open to the public too. And those who attend worship in a marvel of engineering. 
Twelve beams cross the ceiling for support, and no columns interrupt the openness of the large room. This allowed the original worshippers space to perform the ecstatic dancing and singing which characterized their services and gave them their name. Here too there's a great sense of history and memories of times when every seat was filled with the devout. Their ingenuity in architecture is also demonstrated in this round stone barn at another Shaker village in Massachusetts, now a museum. A three-story building, it could accommodate some 52 head of cattle in stalls ringing the ground floor, whilst above, 300 tons of fodder could be comfortably stored. Apparently, 10 wagons at a time could cart hay up a ramp at the top level, then exit without backing up. So clever was the design. But the Shakers are most famous for their furniture. Spare and elegant in design and solid in construction, it was above all extremely functional. Cabinets were built into walls for efficient use of space. Tilter buttons on chair legs kept floors from being scratched. And pegboards were made not only to hold clothes, but to hang chairs on whilst floors were swept. These days, examples of their furniture fetch hundreds of thousands of dollars at auctions, a fact that saddens the brothers and sisters. They say it's ironic that objects made by people dedicated to Christian austerity should sell for so much money. And as their numbers dwindle, they want to be remembered for more than their furniture. 